The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. I'll keep that Welcome back to the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships live from Wrocław, Poland. Have you recovered from that under-20 Open semi-final? I know I certainly haven't. And we've got Italy back on the stream again here in the under-17 Open division. EYUC action here against Belgium. The games come thick and fast here from Wrocław. Benjiris alongside Kristina Obermeyer. As immediately Belgium want to put this towards the end zone. And a big deep shot for the score immediately from the Belgians. They come out firing here. Hey Benji, hey everyone watching at home. Thank you for joining us here on the ulti.tv YouTube channel for this last round of games. Today, Belgium and Italy in the open under 17 division. You can hear the chants from the under-20 open division Italians. Now happy to fire, to give some of their fire to the under-17 contingent as they just won their semi-final. I mean, what a... No, one to get into semi-finals. They did indeed, yeah, won their quarter-final. Under-17 open action is one big pool. Italy are six and one. They've only lost to France. And uh, that was a 10-8 loss in the, their first game of the tournament. They've been on a winning run since then. Belgium, very different fortunes. 1-2, lost 5, uh, with victories over the Netherlands, 14-11. And a... Uh, hang on, there was another one. Why can't I... Read an 11 5 win over Israel. There we go, with other tight losses going down 10 8 to Germany, universe point loss 8 7 to Great Britain, and another universe point loss 7 6 to Sweden. So, this is a Belgian side that might be a little bit better than their record shows. We're definitely excited to see what they can do as Italy are off to the races for their first O point in this under 17 matchup. So they've got a player out in that space between the deep and those kind of middle defenders. He's screaming for the disc nearly, waving his arms, making sure that his uh, teammates haven't forgotten about him. But Italy at the moment just want to play it around the back and Bavia is never going to get a shot at it. Is Italy falling complete? Loads of wind coming from the far side of your screen. Like towards us, kind of. Belgium with a chance to break and take a 2-0 lead. Picking it up just on the end zone line. Shooting, coming free to that open side cone. Belgium with a break. That'll make it 2-0 they lead. Could they be about to pull the upset over Italy? And it's a long way left in this game, but that is how you'd want to start. A very promising start has to give them loads of energy as Italy walk towards the line heads down it's not the way to start your game Kleiss is a long lean figure on the mark and he uses that length well to roll his body past the defender on the mark and uh, finds a receiver coming open towards this near side 2-0 Belgium lead not what Italy would have had in their script No, 
not what they planned out, but they still got so much time left and it's only one break. They can surely come back from that, but they'll have to start that quickly, otherwise it's gonna be too late. So some other uh, Belgian teams kind of congregating on the sideline here, trying to cheer on their team. Italy looking like they've tried to get that mental reset button pushed. Dislova is ready to pull. Look for hugs, apparently, which is nice. Pulls can count into the hugs category, can't they? Oh, hugs. Oh, I see what, yeah, okay. Yeah, hugs, not hucks. Hopefully not on the mark. We certainly wish that to the Italians as they, they are once again off to the races. Big catch yeah. out of ba Bavia. Previously, on their last possession, they were playing everything short and they weren't exposing those spaces over the top. Again, just swinging it around the back. Now they're finding a way through. Looking for those give goes, quick disc movement. Wants to take the reset backwards, good option. Playing quickly off that. Very loud Belgian sideline, roaring their compatriots on. Italy, high release backhand down the far sideline. Brilliant laying out bid, keeps it alive. And now Fabrini wants to put it deep. Can they rise and make the catch? I'm not sure whether that was the intended target, but I am 100% sure that Italy won't mind. They're on the board now for the first time in this game and they trail 2-1. Works regardless of him not, maybe not being the intended target, but what a grab there and immediately looking for a deep option and finding it as well. What a play to get your energy going. It looks like a Davoli with the catch. That is Fabrini's 17th assist of the tournament to go along with seven goals. So clearly, if the Belgians are going to win this game, you feel like they have to limit his influence as much as possible. Although again, in all of these situations, it's easier said than done. Davoli with the grab. He has been playing for five years and his home city is Bologna. Oh, is there, are there any good ultimate teams in Bologna? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I'm, I, I'm just... You got me, Benji. I have no idea. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, of course. There's, on the one hand, a Cusp La Fota, or Cusp as a program in general, and the other, also good, established program in Bologna is Alligators Masi and he is from the Alligators side. Yeah, Bologna, one of kind of the main ultimate hubs, not just in Italy, but in Europe now. And uh, when you look at the Italians, I think you'll see a lot of the roster comes from Bologna or Rimini, home of Costa Rica and Paganello, one of the finest beach tournaments in the world. The ball comes from Olivieri. Or on the far sideline by Belgium, who converted their first O point quickly and cleanly through an arrowed deep strike. This time, oh, the layout bid didn't get there, but it certainly must have caused some intimidation that stopped Dismet from making that catch. Fabrini with a huge layout bid. Going with that diagonal stack. And the front two cut opposite ways out of it. So you get the down the line and the backfield option. Pericolli. Centres for Olivieri. Here's Benzi. Headband to keep that hair out of his face. Finds Olivieri down the sideline. This one, oh, nice reaching grab there made by Simone Era. Now back to Olivieri and just pops that one into Benzi. Italy bring us back on serve, 2-0. And that D-line offence was sweet. I love that bit of dominator set the handlers of going on here. 
just not even looking at the down downfield, the other cutters, rather making space for them to get that disc into the end zone was just the three of them. Play a little bit of goldtimate, maybe. Definitely some goldtimate shots in there. Yeah, utilizing those quick kind of pinball pachinko disc movements, looking for those cheeky little inside shots that I feel like are a hallmark of Italian ultimate. And that diagonal stack that uh, we've seen Italy teams up and down the age divisions and kind of gender brackets use, or age brackets and gender divisions, I guess. Probably better that way around. And uh, it's not just it Italy that use it. I've seen it in, uh, in North America and in Japan as well. Italy ta Italy's coaches taking the best of the best nations tactics and working it to create the, their perfect system have haven't done bad so far. No, it's one of those things that actually you want to see is coaches and kind of senior players looking around different systems, thinking about what do they do well? How does this affect us? How can we change what we do to interpret this, take it on board or try and piece it apart? So Italy having an early break back, back on serve here, pulling to the Belgians. Olivieri Big gets a bit of air underneath it. Big pull there. In play now. Looking around, trying to find an option. Good downfield defense. Abt turns to look at a reset. And then on a high stall, wants to put it deep. Defender knocks it away. That was Bonny. There was a stall out called on the mark. And I think actually because of the turnover downfield, it's going to be retracted. Cicchini in front of us, Italy's number 30, seems to have his arm heavily strapped and bandaged, but he has got his boots on, so it wouldn't surprise me if he takes part in this game regardless. There are, just picks up the grass, sees what the wind is doing. And that one, wow, really lasers an inside flick for Olivieri. Olivier. The look was there, but just too far out in front. It was, he shows us his speed, but just not quite enough and Belgium off to the races. DeForce in the backfield. Cheeky scuba to get it beyond the defender. Ab slays out to rescue it. And now wants to jack this, but it is low and flat, and I think it goes out of bounds on the far sideline as well. Belgium here has kind of might expect when you watch how their senior sides play they're not afraid to live by the sword and die by the sword and the sword in this case is uh some spicy deep shots you got to start early and that's what they're doing here you see the typical obelix set of the italians each framing out into one direction until we get an open shot here. The obelix set implies the existence of an asterisk set as well. Here's Olivieri jacking this one deep and it's in stride for Roberto Laffi. It's a of course, of Arturo. This one wants to pop into space and Cavaletti, who we saw grab a Callahan early in the week, waits, uh, waits that one well. And into the back of the end zone, Italy break and they take their first lead of this game at 3-2. Cavaletti with the score there. He has been playing for four years and is out of Milano. He's a defensive handler and we should look for a fantastic defense and a huge speed. So there's the put from Olivieri. We see what a powerhouse he is driving this D-line offense. Laffi with the reception, as you mentioned, the brother of Arturo Laffi, who pushed him to play frisbee, encouraged him even. No, I think push might be right because uh, eventually it, it wasn't just like you should play frisbee. Oh, all right then. It took a little bit of uh, convincing and coercing, I think. I heard about that, yeah. But uh seems to have worked a charm because now... Uh, Alberto is 
just as hooked as his brother is. Uh, maybe not just as hooked. Not yet, maybe. Well. But he's on his best way. He's there. been playing for four years now and he's still under 17, so... Uh, no, he might be, he might <laughs> be pretty hooked. He feels like he's, okay. pretty, he's hooked pretty deep. His brother, of course, this year playing with a team in Boston, moving there to play with them, which, you know, to me feels like a different kind of hooked. All right, fair. I'll give you that. Give it time, though. Who knows? I'm, so, I'm sure it won't be a one-time connection. So Belgium, the only uh, team here to have entered, the only country to have entered a team in all three divisions of an age bracket. And they've got all three under-20 teams as that pull lands out of bounds. All three under-17 teams, I mean, rather. And will be brought to the brick mark. Dislova strides forward. Gets in place. Disc checked in. Takes the reset that's given to him. He and Kleiss want to play in the backfield. Now breaking downfield. Tight pressure there from the Italian defense gets the turn. Cecchini, who you mentioned has that arm strapped, is still playing and is still effective. Has it now. Wants to turn, pivot, goes back to Olivieri. Olivieri now back to Cecchini. Breaking into the end zone. Oh, it is tipped, but not caught. And that allows Olivieri to clean up the trash. Italy creating some separation a little bit now. 5 2. No, hang on. 4 2 in favour of the Italians? Yes, it is 4 2. I, uh, I, 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 I got ahead of myself there, apologies. So after a bit of a slow start on the Italian side, they come back strong and their energy is so high up here. They It took them a little bit and as we started, maybe five minutes late, one could argue this had an impact on this young team, but s slowly but steadily finding their strive again. There's a little bit of danger in this look from Cicchini here, because with everyone on this far on this near side of the field, he's trying to thread it across. There is always the chance that you get a poaching defender in the way, and that's what happened. But although he got a he got a lot of the di disc, eventually, just didn't get enough. Big gusts of winds now. See it on the shirts of the players. They're moved along. This will really impact the game on both sides. Y look at that Italy flag, just really wanting to escape that pole. So Italy getting ready to go here. Belgium's offense tries to get back to work. Kleist in the backfield, going short, just about completes. Very loud calls from the Italian sideline, trying to get their message across. This one low finds Van Leberger. Popped off, Abt fakes big. And we know that the Belgians or not hesitate to do that if they think it's on. Tries to find DeForce. Van Le Berger. Looks like some sounds, well, not necessarily looks, but sounds like force middle from the Italian defense. There's the deep put from Abt. Has he got this perfect, inch perfect? Fist pumps the air in celebration. Picked out his receiver well. Oscar Loga makes the catch to make it 4-3. I think perfect is just the word, the, the word to say. It is a beautiful put. The backhand around shot perfectly weighted. It's such a hard one to execute going into this win, but puts it up early and high just for one person to collect. And that's his 
intended receiver there on the Belgian side. Hello to everyone watching on YouTube, be that in Italy, in Belgium or wherever you may be, here's a replay. And this is all about the throw from me. The cut is well timed down that far side of the field, but to roll it and to get this to come back in stride is just Perfection from Abs. So whistles go. Italy getting ready to receive. Belgium trying to get themselves pumped up with some loud chanting and cheering. You can hear the sideline here. A lot of uh, banging of drums. I think it's the Belgian parents. I've seen though. I've seen and more accurately heard those around the complex this week. The, the atmosphere all week has been top-notch. Some of the Italian under-20s fresh off their universe point win over Colombia in the semis now on the sidelines. Zone turning up again from Belgium. Seen a lot of zone this week and it's been very effective for a lot of sides. Belgium trying to become one of them. Italy want to get this disc moving quickly. Belgium have got one break this game. They took a 2-0 lead with a turn generated from this zone. But Italy's offense looks like they've worked themselves out of that early funk. Fabrini on the far side. Just resetting backwards. Calm and composed so far from the Italians. Love their lateral movement. Just waiting for the perfect option. Fakes the huge hammer. Just trying to put that thought in the back of the Belgian minds. Now they break through, and they're off to the races. Lovely little shape on that throw through to Gelli. Novelli going back into the middle, Festa redirecting traffic across, really utilizing the width here, wanting to stretch the Belgians horizontally. Fabrini goes back to Festa. Again, they're staying calm and staying cool and staying composed and then firing it, firing it into the back of the end zone. As you, the second you said calm, cool and composed, they ripped it through but found a receiver there, which, you know, makes it no less cool. But a, le a bit less calm. Managed to get it, though. I don't know. I think it feels to me like they picked their spot perfectly. Yeah, they did. I can agree. So there are some other games going on at the complex. Currently, well in this division, we've got Israel already down 8 0 to France. This French team that looks so good and is probably on for a uh, Italy France final tomorrow. I think that is set in stone already. Uh, Germany up 5 3 on the Netherlands. 5-4, excuse me, Netherlands have just scored, and Great Britain up 5-4 on Switzerland. So even though, it, let me let me just clear that up, because I didn't really understand. In this division, even though Italy is ba playing Belgium now, it's already said that Italy will play France in the final tomorrow? So if they lose this and Switzerland win their game, they will both have six wins and two losses, but because Italy won that game against Switzerland, they'll have the head-to-head. -head. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for clarifying that, Benji. Yeah, nine teams in the under-17 Open division, and it is all one big round robin. The top two go straight to the final, with the third and fourth place teams going into the bronze medal match. And at the moment, that looks like being Germany and Switzerland. Interesting German matchup there. German-speaking matchup, I would say, for the third place game. Italy leaving 5-3 to three here. 
Michael Olivieri will pull this into the wind. He's one of the Costa Rica contingent from Brubini. Belgian let the pool hit the floor before picking up. Abt, who got his deep shot just right on their last possession. This time, isn't actually going to get his hands on it because there was another teammate there providing backup. Defray. Ah, oh, still count rising, just chooses to get this off. Abt does really well to reach that before the Italian defence and now threads it through. Going down the sideline. Making the catch under pressure there is Logger. Belgian can keeping the disc moving here. Taking their time to break down the Italian defense. Cheeky little over the top there. Abt, he's looking for it all again, but he hasn't got enough on this one. And it is well read and brought down by Alberto Laffi. Olivieri. Here's Giacchini towards the sideline, and after a lot of advice from his teammates and from the sideline, Simone Erra calls the timeout here, wants to get their offense a bit more set up. So while the two teams on pitch take a breather, we'll do the same here in the booth, and this under-17 open match continues on the other side. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. Welcome back to Ulti TV's coverage of the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championship. Just seeing some of the highlights from the game so far. Coming off the timeout, Italy will have possession, looking to break to take a 6-3 lead. Benji Ries and Christina Obermeyer in the booth. There's the week. Comes towards its conclusion. This is our last game of the day here. Day six in Wrocław, Poland. And tomorrow is a big day because finals day begins. We had some fi some quick or last minute changes in the timing of those finals. We will start with the under 17 games, under 17 finals. Mixed will be at 1 p.m. European time. Women will be at three, open at five. All those will be under 17. And then at 7 p.m., the under-20 mixed division will have their final. On Saturday, we will have the under-20 open game at 9 a.m. and the under-20 women's game at 11.30. Yeah, just the weather forecast, not looking too hot for the uh, for the Saturday afternoon. So uh, the tournament organizers taking the decision that rather than have finals not getting played, they'll preemptively move some of the changes. So just coming in off the timeout, Belgium setting up in a zone, trying to get Italy out of whatever set play they might have drawn up. Olivieri collecting the reset. Now they're swinging around the back. Oh, that one is popped and airmailed. Pericoli catches. There's a stoppage here. It looks like uh, De Force is going to have to take an injury sub. Hopping towards the sideline, so problem with the uh, left leg somehow. Yeah, they're already spotting the knee brace and some Italians help him get off the field. Certainly troubling that. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. 
in the short and long term. Getting ready for the disc to be chucked back in here. Cicchini still has it. Olivieri to Cicchini. Playing it short, Era gets a little bit of a bump on the mark. Checked back in. Resolved nice and quickly, that one. Here's Cicchini. You can see what field position Italy have lost since the timeout. Bit on the mark, that might leave him out of position. Can Italy capitalise? Maybe not as quickly as they would have liked. It was Jones, the player, who was temporarily predisposed. Era. Cicchini, you can see now that they're gaining that field position back. Slowly and steadily. I don't think they necessarily care about the loss of yardage because they were so happy to, to just swing it within the handler set here making the Belgians work and run so hard. Yeah, especially when you've got that larger roster. If you can tire out your opponents, not necessarily a bad thing. And as you say, they're just happy to keep the disc moving, keep possession. Era goes around. Olivieri on the far side, not timing the continuation. Goes for the hammer over the top to Pericoli. Cheeky, but perfectly executed. And a lovely lead pass there to Peludo towards the end zone. What a point from Italy, swinging and just when they'd lulled Belgium into that false sense of security, the hammer over the top, the cheeky inside flick, and then the continuation to the end zone makes it 6-3. Beautiful stuff there out of the Italian side. I, I really loved watching their, their handler set up, just swinging it from one side to the other, waiting, uh, awaiting the pressure from the Belgian. As soon as they set on one side, they would swing it back to the other side again, finding those holes until they were, as you said, lulled in. And you could see on the replay here, this huge hammer put into a space where only an Italian receiver, Pericoli, in this instance could get. And then two easy continuations for the Italian score. Doubling up, six points to three. So, you know, I just saw, saw someone, it's a name on the Belgian team, and I was wondering if any of you can tell me if the number 22, Staff de Crane, is related to the de Crane brothers, Lander and Tobe. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I've seen it. I haven't had it confirmed, but if it is not, I would be exceedingly surprised. I feel like there is another one on the way. We do see a lot of families in uh, kind of at the youth levels and uh, Belgium especially. We do. And with the talent that runs in this De Crane fam family. One to watch out for? <laughs> Definitely. I'd fear, I'd fear the name. Now, you do wonder actually if it... Uh, it's one of those things where once they see that, oh, this is a, uh, this kid's related to these players, whether that reputation precedes them a little bit and you play the name and not actually what's out there on the pitch. Maybe. I'd, I'd probably look at the guy first. But then, yeah, just take precautions for sure, having, having that in the back of my head. Looks like the teams have taken a timeout to refocus. So both sides looking to get refocused here. Italy maybe see an opportunity here to put their collective foot down and try and really pull away from Belgium here. The other games in this division, Switzerland 7-6 up on Great Britain now. Uh, Germany and the Netherlands tied at fives. And Israel have gotten the board against France, but they are now 10-1 down. Eyes also on the mixed division, under 20 mixed, that is. Sweden up 6-4 on Hungary. Interesting. Sweden up 6-4 on Hungary. 
for those of you unaware why that is potentially interesting because if Sweden win that then Hungary who went unbeaten in the first pool phase of this tournament and looked pretty unassailable in doing so won their six games by a collective 50 plus 54 goal difference could end up not even making the final unless they can mount a comeback there certainly one we'll be keeping an eye on at a Swedish side, I think even shown in the live stream against Hungary earlier this week, where one could see Hungary just being one step up above them. We definitely saw Hungary face off against Colombia, I think. I don't know. Might be right on that one. It's been a long week here in Wroclaw, but a thoroughly enjoyable one as well. Thank you for confirming that. Yes, tw 22 on the Belgian roster staff de Kren is related to the other two and we will keep an eye on him from now on. So, Italian zone and we've seen this from their senior, I say senior, more senior teams. They put that assassin, the and one, whatever you want to call it. They put a match mark on whoever they feel is the most dangerous threat. In this case, They've put Benzi on Matt Kleiss. That one maybe a little bit overthrown. No, brilliantly rescued by Belgium. De Sterke goes to ground to keep it alive. Bodum still being very slow and very circumspect, all tipped up and knocked to the floor. Era making himself big in the front line of Italy's defense. And now they're turning towards the back of the end zone. Just rushed that shot slightly and Pericoli couldn't track it. Layout to keep that disc off the ground and collect it quicker to try and punch it in for a break, but not quite there for Italy as Bodum get another chance. What can Belgium do with it? Ooh, a hand on it from Paludu, and then dived over his opposite number, but uh, must have caught him as he did so. Bit of a discussion. Lorenzo Latour. And uh, just looking for a hand signal here. I think retracted. And you can see, actually, that half of the Italian team is just like, we'll, we'll mosey on away from the disc and we'll let you play three on three in the end zone. And interesting look, and I love it because it works, clears out all that space for Era to score the goal. I would, what I'd like to see from Belgium, I think, is to recognise that and just ignore those players and just flood the end zone defensively. But a lot of easy to say here from the sideline with the benefit of hindsight. I, I agree with you initially, but that, happen, that works for like the first shot. But after that, what do you do with so many free players in the backfield? You get them, you get all the defenders out of position in the end zone, but then the backfield will be so free and going. It, we've seen the Italians not being afraid to lose yards. And they're so safe with the disc, even the wind doesn't stifle them. So sooner or later, it, will, it would be just an opportunity to, from Italy to hit the end zone. And this one, just isolating players, keep giving them maybe also a chance to learn these cuts. I think what we're seeing here is the uh, the coaching acumen from Italy. They've they've employed and one zones there. You see a a more different defensive look, dif defensive offensive look there, getting players to just ignore the end zone so they can play three on three. What else have we seen? We've seen off the timeout where so often teams seem to turn, they played cool and calm and uh, yeah, this Italy side clearly really tactically quite advanced. Non ti preoccupare, ti 
So Italy getting ready to pull. A break here would send them into half time. the races. Nick Ryan with the disc in his hands. Puts up a deep shot. Two Italians underneath it and one Belgium and the Belgian can't come up with it. So many bodies underneath it and that is a clean D. Yeah, Desmet, I think he got a palm to it, but rather than bring it in, he could only just kind of tip it about, tip it past the crossbar. Well, I think that, that, that Probably confirms if we didn't already know that staff is definitely a de Kleiner. Yeah. I could have I could have seen that from that shot only. Olivier walking the disc to the end zone line. So Italy will have the disc to break for half. Ripped down by Pedagoli. This one, oh this is gonna float. And, and Belgium get it back. De Grene gets it back for the Belgians. Just calling that we should watch out for him on the commons. And now he gets big for the Belgians. Going down the sideline. De Force, who we saw go off earlier this game, back on. And now it rolls his wrist around it, looking for the end zone. Cloud of bodies underneath it. And Italy knock it away. Hungary, by the way, score three on the bounce and they're now 6 5 up on Sweden. In the, that under 20 mixed game that decides who takes the place in the final along Switzerland. And Italy want to call their second time out of the half. But they've already used two. A disc goes back. I don't think the disc should go back. I'm not sure if there is something else that will stop the play. As players are moving back to their original positions. Maybe a travel on the call? I, didn't, I must admit, didn't see anything. But either way, we're still in play as Pericoli rises, brings the disc down. Dismat trying to make himself big on the mark. And that is the timeout call from Michael Olivieri. So Italy, once we come back in, we'll uh, get a chance to uh, take this game into half. And we're going to take a little bit of a breather in the booth while both sides get a chance to collect themselves. And we'll be right back with you shortly. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. TV's coverage of the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championship here from Wrocław, Poland. Under 17 open pool play action. Italy against Belgium. 
Italy coming off this timeout will have the disc and a chance to break to take us into half. Italy have been dominant in this game so, f so far, coming back from being down 2-0. to zero. Yeah, they've gone on a 7-1 run since then, which is pretty good. Impressive, to say the least. Olivieri waiting to pick up the disc. Side stack look for the Italians. Churning underneath cut from Benzi. Cleared that middle space so well. Continuation, or it was a little bit behind. He tried to slow up, but Malaguti couldn't slow down in time. Belgium looking big over the top. Reeled in just shy of the end zone and flipped in for the Belgian score. Italy's first time out worked a treat. That one backfired hard. Hard. I don't know, a little bit, yes, for sure. They got off two, two good cuts, and that set play was really impressive. But in the end, Belgium get it back and score quickly. Now again, the Belgians not afraid to go deep. And then just bringing it in, Dismet flips into the end zone for De Force. So the Belgian coaches and managers getting water on and giving instructions. They're pr probably putting out another power line. One of my old teammates in London, his, uh, his twin brother's one of the Belgian coaches, which is a nice little connection. Interesting. Obviously, sure. this doesn't change my rooting interests, which is completely 100% and totally impartial. Yeah, just want to watch some, some good frisbee. Always. Forty-four minutes, nearly forty-five already on the board here. This pull floats and drifts out of the far the near sideline. Or not. I lost sight of it and it must have stayed in because Italy resumed exceedingly quickly. Here's Bavia. Bavia opens up. This might hang up in the air and it is knocked away by Sander van Leberga. Leberger doing a lot of heavy lifting for that Belgian side. I've heard that name again and again this game. Just tips it enough, as we see here on the replay, to punch that disc in and out of the, the surrounding of the Italian player. Yep, yeah, yeah, we'll go with it, sure. One of those things where the, the, the huck probably could have been a bit zippier and flatter and got too much air underneath it, and that allowed the Belgian defence to close and tip it. Oh, high release, trying to get Kleiss in space. Unorthodox, but it worked. I think that's how you could describe Belgium Ultimate in general. I mean, when Mooncatchers take fourth it in the Open Division in Cincinnati, uh, yeah, hard to disagree. I Ooh. don't think Gentle is any different in, in that contingent. Popped up out of the hands of De Sterke. Some ice creams have arrived. Rosi will bring it in. Italy can take half here. Uh, pick maybe downfield. Flavor ice cream if you grabbed. Mint chocolate. I will fight you for that. Rosi. Struggling to find an option coming free. Flows this one into the centre. Whoa, what a layout to rescue and salvage possession there from Mattia Gelli. And now into the end zone for Rosi for the score in an 8-4 half-time lead. Or is it? Travel call, maybe? I think that uh, Rosi was just not quite in the end zone. It'll be checked in by De Slova on the mark. Looking for the inside flick. No, the around backhand. They set up the isolation to Giorgio Bavia exquisitely. And he brings 
Italy into half, 8-4 up. Many stoppages here for this last point, but in the end, Italy come out victorious, close out the half, and both these teams are trying to keep their energy up during that halftime break and then get fiery for this last half of Ultimate today. Yeah, Bavia's father played for Costa Rica for many years and uh, participated in the 1996 World Club Championships in glamorous St. Andrews, Scotland. So, while the two teams break for half time, we've got about five, six minutes. We're going to have a little break as well here in the booth, give our crew a chance to have a rest. And the last half of today, Belgium versus Italy, part two, continues after this break. Bichon picks up and they've got a short field. They've got another goal. It's tied up at 12. I cannot Huge believe what goes. I'm seeing Can here. Lola Dam chase that one down? That is a score for Hasliger Elverkel. Fantastic run by Julia Lowe. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. And we believe that that requires knocking down the paywall. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. And we want them to go viral. When you become a member, you enable us to improve our working relationships with tournament organizers, events and federations. And you'll help us to produce live stories for Ultimate fans and to generate new fans with our enhanced content. We, we are, are a group of Ultimate, Ultimate players, players, coaches and video enthusiasts and we want to bring you coverage on a more consistent basis. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Ciao ragazzi, support the community. And subscribe Ulti TV. There's lots of the videos, posting, everything. Check it out. <laughs> they are the best one. Woo! If you want to grow Ultimate Sports, uh, become a member of Ulti TV. Regardez Ulti TV. Deviens un membre Ulti TV et fais grandir ta communauté. Stop Ulti TV. Salme et Ginkime Ultimate of Andromeda. Si quieres ayudar a Ulti TV, puedes ser miembro de Ulti TV. Everyone, follow Ulti.tv on Instagram, on YouTube. They've got everything. Best content. Like their pictures if you love free speech, just do it. We're counting on you. Give me a love for Ulti TV. Became member of Ulti TV. Mamma mia. Contribue au développement d'Ultimate avec Ulti TV. Like and subscribe, Ulti TV, the best in the world. We want to grow Ultimate. We want to grow Ultimate. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We have our signature style two camera setup. With thousands of hours of experience. And our crew is globally dispersed to facilitate coverage everywhere around the world. We can also scale back our broadcast with just one elevated camera. Or scale up with two fields, two cameras and two commentators on each. We work with local teams and we all have the same mission, to grow the sport and bring it to new people by providing live coverage and new stories. Become a member today on our Patreon page. And fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories, ideas and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow Ultimate everywhere. Meistering immediately launches it deep. Got the shot down. No! Don't you dare do this! Zone. Finney! Oh! God. Who let you move to oh, Europe? This is disgraceful down. behavior. I didn't realize Vosicic you had a check doppelganger. Disc. Don't you look at the camera like and you know what you grab. did. The receiver Honestly. had no chance to actually check his feet. Seems like everyone will agree. Right now. He's going to have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a <laughs> football. Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of the energy they needed.
Welcome back to the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships. Ulti TV's coverage of this combined event here in Wrocław, Poland. The World Junior Ultimate Championship combining the Under-20 Open, Mixed and Women's Divisions and the European Youth Ultimate Championship Under-17 Women's Mixed and Open. And it is an Under-17 Open game we have for you this evening. Belgium pulling to Italy down at half 8-4. Thank you for joining us here on Ulti TV's YouTube channel. Benji Reese and Christina Obermeyer in the booth. Second half underway. Italy on offence. Belgium trying to throw something different at them defensively. Make them slice through the Belgians. Yeah, Italy. Again, calm and chilled. Just working in their hander set now, piercing it through and off to the races. Are Italy? Belgium apply the brakes well. They want the Italians to make a large number of passes. Would call the zone a, an M zone. A what? M zone. As in for Mike? Yeah, because you have three people in the hander set. Two people filling the holes over there, and then two people in the very back, but the, the first five are shaped like an M. Do you connect the dots? I see what you mean, is uh, Italy get it on the sideline and then hammer it over the top to Novelli. Looking for the give-go, Festa, Torosi. Now here's Fabrini. Fabrini to Festa, Festa to Fabrini. Sounds like Belgium wants to transition into one-on-one. -on -one. Can they cause enough confusion or will the Italians adjust? Rosi just outside the end zone. Oh, slips. Does the cutter. Fabrini works the blade around. Oh, it was tipped but not caught. And unfortunately for the Belgian youngster, it's a lesson you've got to learn nice and early. If you don't catch your D, you leave the door open and Italy make it 9-4. Great stuff out of the Italian, making sure to keep his focus on the disc, even though it was it was tipped by the defender. Still getting that goal in, making it 9-4 in favor of Italy. Matteo Rosi, an offensive handler for this Italian side. Saw him work through that zone like a pro, and I believe there's a Rosi brother in the under-20 division as well already securing their place in a semi-final look at that replay here cut the cutter slips gets out of the way making room and that flick just comes out of the hands perfectly tipped but not enough for the score to prevent the score rather far more experienced players have made the same mistake of not of not catching it and just tipping it on instead so uh, don't worry it happens to the best of us it definitely does but it's a it's a good lesson to learn early I think yeah, he's never going to do that again. I mean, never is a big word, but not <laughs> not in the near future. Not if he can help it. 9-4 Italy lead. Nice clean hold coming out of half. 
pulling just beyond the Belgian brick mark. Very loud presence on the sidelines here, creating a nice buzz around the grounds. Faking the scuba there, De Krena. Ooh, a little blade, Abts toes the sideline well. And Abs does like to put it deep, he's done so once again. Underneath it, boxing out is Alberto Laffi, who's patrolled that deep space marvellously for the Italians. Who else but Laffi to collect that D. And we see this Italian D-line offence go to work again. Coming underneath, Peludo. Once the around break doesn't see it, a couple of players in that space, it goes through to Cicchini. Cicchini to Erra. Erra. Oh, maybe a little bit of a tip on that on the mark. But a really nice layout from Pericoli to save it. Pericoli into the center. Again low, but Cicchini goes to ground to make sure that he can get his body behind it. And Erra wants to roll his wrists around, still not quite in the end zone but not just on the doorstep. Still Italy happy to just dink and dunk their way until they can get into the end zone. And eventually they work. Got a falls over, but he makes the catch anyway. Erra scores Italy's 10th of the game. 10-4 they lead now. 10-4 in favor of Italy. They're again using this isolation of three people, running it as a dominator set into the end zone. I love that adjustment seeing as they are speedy and rather smaller than the Belgian side, but therefore can turn far quicker and know each other well enough to, to just put it in with the quick pops. Yeah, using, those, using that kind of lower center of gravity to make those short, sharp changes of direction. But I love that the Belgian sideline is still loud, still cheering on their charges, still engaged in the game. With under 17, it's a lot about having fun playing frisbee, getting experience as well. Yeah, you've got to kind of take quite a holistic view of the whole thing. Obviously, you want to win games while you're here, but almost more important is developing Skill. your team. Yeah, developing your team as players and as people as well, and kind of helping build bonds, friendships, relationships that will endure throughout the years. I love seeing it tight matchups at under 17 level and then seeing them again a couple of years down the line in under 20s and then seeing them again a couple of years down the line in under 24s and then seeing them again. You get the picture. Yeah, I, I do get it. It was very painted very elaborately. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, been a long day. It, uh, it really has, but what a great day we've, we've had so far. Absolutely. This tournament has not disappointed. Not at all. And so much much more action coming tomorrow and on Saturday. We've already told you the finals have had a, have had a bit of a switch up. The schedule changed a little bit. And you can look, if, if you're interested in, in knowing the exact times, you can look at the John Junior Ultimate Championship website, jjuc.sports. And uh, Belgian are calling offside here on the Italian, so they get to bring the disc from the brick mark. Interesting. I've had talks to, to spectator, with spectators on the sideline who have said, oh, I don't know why nobody looks at that. That would be such an advantage. And here, Belgium using this advantage of getting the, the disc on the brick mark. I think it's one of those things where teams kind of just don't think about it until they're called on it. And then all of a sudden they kind of, oh, oh yeah, I guess we kind of all were offside. Italian zone getting set up. Benzi comes forward out of it. He's trying to guard De Forza here. And that one is ripped downfield, but that front line of the Italian defense was waiting and he got the hands up quickly to deflect the pass. And block on that point. Gives Italy a red zone opportunity. Olivieri just pops this one backwards. 
Peludu to Pericoli. Pericoli wants to blade. Oh, this is spicy. What a grab that is from Olivieri. Such a reliable distributor. But he can bring it down as well because that was a tricky catch. But he, he read it perfectly. He definitely did. Michael Olivieri. I only know Michele in the in the Ita Italian way of saying Michael, but Michele, Olivieri. I've just gone with Michael, to be honest. Fair enough. Player at a very mini. On the, bit of an, on the smaller side, but uses his body so well to position himself that he doesn't, doesn't <laughs> really need the height. No. Not when he's not when he's got the disc in hand. That time it, yeah, not not the tallest lad, but uh, <laughs> every single centimeter certainly helped in there. But he really high pointed that disc, got it probably at the very apex of his reach. Yeah, he did. See both teams huddled up. Some last minute in minute instructions from both coaches. As Italy are 11-4 up on Belgium. Yeah, I didn't see a timeout call. I think both sides are just making every single second they have count. Yep. I think so. So we are finally slowly reaching the business end of this last game. These games in the under-17 division last 80 minutes or until 15 points are scored. And we are at 66 and a half minutes. Yeah, and Italy four points away from victory, or 11 points for Belgium. If, Belgi if Belgium were to reach 15 here, what a game we'd we've have. We've seen quite a bit of upsets, quite yeah. a bit of runs to go back even. It would, have, it would be a huge task. The winner, I should, uh, sorry, not the winner. Italy will take on France in the final tomorrow. That is already decided with the round-robin format of the initial pool. That pool is uh, way out of bounds. But that under-17 open final takes place tomorrow at 5 o'clock, under-17 mixed at 1 o'clock, under-17 women at 3 o'clock, and under-20 mixed has been moved to the Friday, so six games for you tomorrow. That takes place at seven o'clock local time, so we get to stream every division tomorrow. Loads of work for us. Yeah, it's because of inclement weather predicted for uh, for Saturday, so the under-20 Open final is at nine o'clock, and the under-20 women's final is at 11.30. Belgium there, can't find their way through. Can't pick the Italian zone apart. Again, Edda and then uh, Casali both kind of pick up a bit of grass, try and check the wind conditions. Want to give themselves every possible advantage. Nice little leading throw there to Edda. He might put this one deep, he does. Wants to float it just outside the end zone. Continuation that breakside disc. The defender just saw it late. And Italy turning on the Jets a little bit here late in this game, extending their advantage further to 12-4. Beautiful stuff out of the Italian side. I remember watching the French thinking, French under 17, that is, thinking they play like adults, but Italy have nothing on them, and I'm so excited for this for this game in the under, under 17 final. Both these teams looking so mature whenever they take the field. They've got clear play styles. You can see the, the coaching effect of as well. It's, I'm honestly, I don't think we've got a bad final on the books at all. No! Not, not just in this division, but in all the divisions. It is a final after all. It's supposed to be a good game. I mean, we do see, we do see blowouts. You look at the, uh, look at the recent World Ultimate Club Championships out in Cincinnati in the, the mixed, mixed final. final. Yeah, 15-6 mixtape beat Red Flag in the end. And that was not close, but uh, got two great games in the other finals, especially that women's final. If you haven't watched that, instant classic yeah please do so it is amazing ultimate displayed ultimate frisbee in the highest on the highest level possible the club stage so other games going on around the ground france in their last warm-up for the final polished off israel 15-3 so they'll be going in strong form Solid. switzerland up 12-10 in germany 
on Great Britain, sorry. This is also the uh, under-17 Open Division and Germany up 10-8 on the Netherlands. Maybe the other game we're keeping a close eye on is in the under-20 mixed division. The winner of Sweden versus Hungary takes their place alongside Switzerland in the mixed final that will now take place at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Hungary currently 9-7 up. So they came back in that game? Yeah, they were 5-3 down at one point and then took half 8-5. Wow, what a way to get back in there. Yeah, showing their class. That's definitely what Belgium is looking to do now. Yeah, they've got a lot of a taller order to come back from, but... Uh, you get the first point on the board and then take it point by point. At the moment, Abs trying to anchor things from the centre handler position. How long will he stay patient or will he go for that booming backhand that he loves? Faked it there, but holsters for now. Now, Defray tries to space out the Italian defence. But still in their own end zone at the moment. And they're moving backwards and backwards. Pressure from the Italians as high as a hammer goes up. And Laffy doesn't even bother defending it. Knows that there's no one behind him, so just watches it flutter to the floor. I've noticed that for this, that for this Italians, Italian side, there is a very clear structure of uh, handlers and cutters. So as Laffy is rather part of the downfield cutting contingent, he lets one of the veteran handlers, veteran I say with a bit of a twinkle, pick up the disc instead. Yeah, if he uh, doesn't have to catch it, then he will probably not do so as that leading flick there is too far for the diving Peludu. That one all overthrown in the backfield. Italy will pick up right on the end zone line. In the past, we've seen them just only put three players around there and leave everyone else out. But this looks to be a more traditional end zone set. Well, they set up an isolation. Belgium get a poach in that space. Off the line goes to Benzi. They've got a wide open swing. Not taking it though. Little lead pass. Trying to lead him into the end zone. Cavaletti has crossed the plane in time. And now Italy 13-4. Two points away from the win here. Beautiful stuff there out of the Italians. I'll say it again. That end zone set looks so clean. They start on this one end, end zone line at the one at the sideline on the far side of the field. And then they work it all the way to the middle end to the near side near our, our cameras and put it in there, just completely moving the position of the disc to the other side. And that's just technically technically. On a techni from a st technical standpoint, just the ideal thing to do when you're this close to the end zone. Uh, looks like there's going to be a timeout called here by Italy on the field. So while uh, while the young guns out there get a break, our crew will do the same. But don't go anywhere because the second half of this under-17 open game here at JJUC continues on the other side. He's in a great spot. Yeah. He's in a perfect spot. Yes, his massive head has blocked everything. Oh. That was a huge play, yeah, but we have seen face. none of it. Finney, Finney, he's done it. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a <laughs> football. Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. Right now, 
gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a football. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. Welcome back to the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships and we've got EYUC European Youth Ultimate Championships action for you. Under 17 Open Division, it is Belgium versus Italy. Italy two points away from victory here, 13-4. Their uh, fate already mostly sealed. We'll be seeing them in tomorrow's final, 5 o'clock local time, against France. But obviously they want to be entering that on as strong a note as they possibly can. Well, I think they're on the best way to doing that as they're up 13 to 4 to Belgium. Remember they were 2 0 down? Feels like a <laughs> long, long time ago. It has been a long, long time ago. It has been around 75 minutes since the start of this game. And we are looking to close that out. And Italy is, clo is trying to close that out. 15 to 4, but let's see if, if, that'll, if the time will allow that. Yeah, games in the under-17 divisions played 80 minutes where the time cap comes on. So if no one's reached 15 by that point, you finish the point, add one to the highest score, and that becomes your new score cap. There's a Belgian receiver streaking who's got about half the field's worth of separation, but I guess they just didn't see him. And uh, Van Le Berger has to probably begrudgingly trudge underneath as a couple of players on the ground for Belgium. Huge. Oh, yeah, you can see there's a big old dent in that disc. <laughs> there's a huge dent in that disc, yeah. It's big. Someone landed on top. It's, there's a hole, yeah. So uh, we'll get a replacement disc. You are allowed to uh, to switch uh, a damaged disc for, for a replacement if both teams agree. And uh, it would surprise me if they didn't on that. Sometimes it seems uh, debatable, but I think that's pretty clear cut. So, defense will just check the ground when we're ready to go. Here's the countdown. Three, two, one, and we're back in play. Good countdown, Benji. Thank you very much. Been working on it. Casali picks up. Resets to Fester in the center. Past the bidding defender. This might give Italy the opportunity to go to the races, but that's a little bit too far out in front. Fester lays out brilliantly to keep it alive. Kind of locked in on that end zone a little bit, but he does reset to Casali. Handler clears it through. Now looking for options, still count rising here. Gets it off, oh, this is gonna be tipped. And, oh, I think that Peludu actually bid a little early and he could have maybe chased it down more quickly, but uh, the huck goes up deep and I'm pretty sure Peludu called the injury stoppage before that. He did his fingers. Looking a bit contested there as he gets up. Clearly slightly shaken up. Wonder if he's winded himself there. I felt like he he had space to chase it down maybe a little bit further than he did originally. I think he just wanted to reel that disc in as quickly as possible. Yeah, he gets he does get a hand on it, but cannot quite clutch it in time. A bit of discussion. He is calling an injury and leaving the field. Cicchini will come on as a replacement. They're calling for the physio. I hope he is okay. Yeah. I think the Rossi on the sideline here was indicating that it wants to have a look at that hand. Abt wants to lead this into space and actually perfectly bisected his choice of targets. Couldn't have put it any more perfectly between them if he tried. No, that was pretty much on a platter. But the wind pressure pushing it down gives the disc back to Italy. Cicchini picks up with this diagonal set downfield. The front two split apart. The reset goes into the backfield. And there's a call for maybe a bump downfield. Foul call. Offensive receiving foul, defensive foul, something like that. 
So we've hit the 18 minute mark. So the cap will go on after this point, we believe. We do. It will be a game to 15, regardless. No, of course not regardless. Either 14 or 15. Yeah, depending on who scores. Italy. We'll try to make sure it's them and that we've got game to 15. That one all actually slips through the clutches of Novelli. Belgium pick up, they want to strike deep quickly. Dicrino was the target. And that catch was out of bounds. I think some of the sideline saw that quickly and wanted to offer their opinion and then were hushed by their teammates. It was like, it's not your turn to get involved. So I, I, like, I mean, obviously you'd rather they not try in the first place, but I like that they were, uh, their teammates kind of showed them the error of their ways. Cecchini here to Casali, the lefty. Double checks that he's put his feet in bounds. Oh, low throw. That one definitely hit the turf. Yeah, I agree. But it's not our place to call, and Italy. Italy, I agree. Yeah, the Italian coach on the sideline was... Telling his players to, uh, you know, accept the play. That was very obvious. It was obvious to us, at least. It's always difficult when you're so involved to be objective sometimes. Perhaps. To the Krona. She takes the reset off. Perhaps. Another one of the youths here choosing, choosing to rock the mallet. Tries to jump it into the end zone. Van Le Berger does so as well. So 13-5 and we'll have a game to 14. Well then from the Belgian side to get back into this and get that goal. It seemed like a very long point, a contested one as well. But Belgium getting the better of Italy this, this time. They could go back. Italy, of course, have to score to win, which is one of the, in my opinion, best parts of the game, ultimate. 100% agreed. Hungary versus Sweden in the U20 mixed. Hungary only 10-9 up now. So Sweden mounting the comeback for a chance to take the place in now tomorrow's final against the Swiss. And what a come down that will be from Hungary after they... Uh, swept the initial pull. Yeah, Hungary being very dominant initial, initially, but then facing Could some obstacles. Yeah, maybe uh, it's been said to the Hungarians that they have an unusual, unorthodox style of play. So maybe the first time you face them, it catches you out. But the second time, you're a bit more ready for it. You can make those adjustments. Do you say it's tough to beat the same team twice? Italy their under-17 open side will certainly be hoping that in tomorrow's final when they went down 10-8 to France in the very first game of the pool. So both sides have done a lot of growing and maturing since then. I bet some conne connection have definitely formed during this week and seeing that playing them in their first game of the week and last game of, of the week is something very special. And I'm so looking forward to that. I hope all of you are too. And I'd love to see all of you tune in as well for this final as well as all the other finals we will give you tomorrow and the day after that, Saturday. Yeah, an extended day tomorrow with inclement weather forecast on Saturday afternoon. So six games for you, one from each division, including four of the six finals. And the other two, well, they've got semi-finals in the morning as well. So uh, bumper day tomorrow as Italy want to end it in style. A picture-perfect put from Festa. Finds Gerli. And that is game. 14-5, Italy win. What a zipper flick into the end zone, perfectly weighted. And that's part of what I think is the majority of this team, if, they ha if it comes to the business and if they have to do it, they will punch it in for the goal. What a great game from both sides. Belgium not stopping the fight, trying to give their best game and Italy celebrating their win. So, that's going to end our coverage from day six of the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships. And here's what we have on the dock for you tomorrow, because I think it's important that you should know this, because, oh baby, it's an absolute stonker. We start with a under-20 women's semi-final. It'll be USA versus Canada or France versus Italy. 
then we have an under 20 open semi final. It'll be USA versus Italy or Canada versus France. Those at 9 and 11 o'clock, respectively. Then at 1 o'clock local time, we have our first final of the day, the under 17 mixed final. I'm just going to get a double check on uh, who we're going to see in that final. I think it's going to be Hungary versus Italy. And it's not the last time we'll be seeing Italy tomorrow. Hungary, though, probably the favourites going to that one, undefeated through eight games of the double round robin. After that, we have the under-17 women's final. Though two teams we see contesting that will be, and this might be, some of you have heard this before, Italy versus France, Italy's second final of the day. We then go to the under-17 men's final, so the women's at the mixed final, under-17s at one o'clock, under-17 women's at three o'clock. At five o'clock, under-17 open final with France versus Italy again. Oh wow, changing it up here. Yeah, Italy hoping to clean sweep the under-17s division. Although France will obviously try and stop that in the open and women's and Hungary will in the mixed. Then the under-20 mixed final is at seven o'clock local time, an evening game to really get your pulses racing. And it'll be Switzerland versus the winner of Sweden versus Hungary that is going on right now with Hungary nine, so ten, nine up at the moment. And then the under-20 open and then women's finals will be played on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock and 11.30 local time. So, now you know what's going on for the next two days, it's time for all of us, I think, to try and get an early night, keep ourselves refreshed and ready to go for what promises to be just an enthralling double finals day here in Wrocław, Poland for the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships. For all of our OTTV crew, for Christina Robermeyer with me in the booth, I am